Welcome to Legends of Grayskull, the Masters of the Universe podcast that dives deep into the lore of Eternia, Etheria, and more. Join your hosts, Matthew Deutsch and Sean Scavarna, as they discuss the most powerful stories the universe has to offer. News, remasterings, and more are just ahead on Legends of Grayskull. Welcome to Legends of Grayskull, the fan podcast where we discuss the history, the mystery, the magic, and mythology of He-Man, She-Ra, Eternia, Etheria, Nordor, Primus, New Adventures, Old Adventures, Ladybird, UK Annuals, Comics, Mini Comics, anything and everything you can think of with that He-Man, She-Ra, Masters of the Universe, Princess of Power, that Mattel logo down in the corner. I'm Matthew Dooch, here again with Sean Scavarna. Sean, how are we doing today? I'm nostalgic tonight, so yes. I'll I'll give you a little geekdom story uh, to start Ooh, our we're getting episode right into off. Stories, I like it. We're story time with Sean. So, uh, I want to say it was about two years ago. Uh, I went down memory lane, and there was there was this there there was a channel in Baltimore where I was growing up that they had a afternoon show block of two hours, okay. and there was a host for it. Uh, and it was like a children's show. You can watch your cartoons and all that stuff. And I went down uh, memory lane with that. And, I, and uh, I've been subscribed to a lot of groups now connected to that. His name was Captain Chesapeake because it was Chesapeake Bay down sure. in Baltimore and everything. Was, and, was he a um, clam? No, he was just a guy. He had okay. a, like a like a captain hat on and all that. He, he looked a little like uh, he was like a skinny version of the skipper on uh, Gilligan's Island. Okay. Okay. And he had this sea monster that would co-host with him, and all this, which was kind of fun. And he'd he'd read uh, children's uh, letters into the show and all that, so you could be, oh my gosh, I'm famous! I got to be on the Captain Chesapeake show. And he'd send even um, little like membership cards to kids and stuff when they would write in, and it it, it, it became a thing. And he was like a local celebrity down in Baltimore. Um, and I found out this weekend today is the 50th anniversary of WBFF Channel 45 in Baltimore. And that is the exact place where in 1983, I ran home from kindergarten, sat down in front of my TV, and watched the very first episode of He-Man and the Masters of the Universe, The Diamond Ray of Disappearance. So it, it it was crazy to see all that coming up from this weekend and then it turned out today april 11th the day that we are recording this episode is legitimately the 50th anniversary of the channel that brought me he-man as a kid so (laughs) believable i it's very rare i get to say that kind of stuff so uh yeah happy birthday channel uh 45 wbff in baltimore congratulations even though it's water but uh yeah (laughs) very cool um so, yeah, I'm a little nostalgic tonight, just going like, man, you know, like, how long ago it was that I was down there watching this stuff, watching He-Man, G.I. Joe, Thundercats, w- Scooby-Doo, w- all that. And it's like, it all, because of that channel, this little independent channel down in Baltimore, that's, bringing me all this good stuff. That's kind of weird that they bundled that kind of stuff into a block like that, too. Like, that's, that's different. Um mm-hmm. Because usually that kind of stuff would just be, you know, like that's it. So I, I loved it. Done. It was it, it, it. It's like you have the beginning of the of his show start, and then they would bring you the cartoons. And in the middle, like when they would do the commercial breaks, he would pop in and he would give like <laughs> viewer letters and stuff from. Th- and and the the really cool thing, and and uh, this reminds me of a friend of the show, uh, Danielle Galerter. Yeah. I found out way too late in my life, which depressed me. Um, The same guy that did that show, George Carroll, who was uh, Captain Chesapeake, he did the late night horror movie hosting as well. And I actually, I, I, uh, let me share this off real quick here too. Uh, In the last year, I actually found this, a little dusty here, unfortunately. He was the ghost host. Oh, wow. Um, 
<laughs> and, and so this is a shot of him hosting the show. He had this like ghoulish kind of a character he'd, he'd play. And uh, somebody had this online. They were selling off. They, they did three episodes, one of which is the original uh, Frankenstein with uh, Boris Karloff and everything. And so it's like I think of this when I think of him, but I yeah. also think of my childhood with Masters of the Universe, uh, Thundercats, and everything else, too, after school when and I would run home. For those of you who are listening, I did get uh, a photo of Captain Chesapeake and... Mondi the monster if i'm reading this right yes Mondi the monster Mondi. that's right I, they, yep. they are up on the screen there if you want to head over to the youtube and uh check that out they are and if you're from baltimore yeah you, hey you know you, that's even cooler it probably gives you the warm and fuzzies that is an interesting oh. like creature from uh, or loch ness monster with like a horn on his head type of vibe what? that's uh it, it was loch ness, loch ness monster of the chesapeake they kept branding him if i remember it's it's been years so i, I right. don't want to go and say i remember everything but i uh, that show it would always start out the block of cartoons and his theme song was just it was embedded in my dna as much as the he-man theme because he-Man was the first cartoon of the afternoon then, once that show started. Nice. So you, you start that, and he'd say, Hi, welcome, kids. Here's the show today. And then all of a sudden, He-Man is like, yeah! <laughs> <laughs> so it's like he's bringing, he's bringing the goodness along every time he showed up. So that was always a good thing. Yeah, I'm jealous. I never got to I never got to experience that with, with He-Man and Shiro. I was all, I've said it before, I was all the vhs tapes and that was my that was my go-to and uh you know i had uh for me it was it was disney afternoon uh with uh, chip and dale and ducktales and uh darkwing duck darkwing and, duck there was a oh tailspin how can i forget tailspin like that mm -hmm. that was an awesome block and then once Fox really started cranking out, you'd have the X Men, Spider Man, uh, Fantastic mm. Four, all that. Those are the the TV blocks I remember, and I mm. I still remember they the the Fox Kids. They had those bumpers um, going in and out of commercial break with the little. Uh, and no one else has ever remembered this. I brought this up to other people before, and you probably won't either because it had to have been my local station. They had this little. It was like. These crudely drawn, like, cartoons, kind of like the old Bubble Yum commercials, like that very okay. cartoony look, yeah. and it was following this little kid named Wilby, and Will he, would do, he would do something stupid, like he'd go riding his bike down a steep hill, and his mom would yell, Wilby! And he would, like, hit something, and go, right back, and then it would go, go to the commercial. <laughs> I know, it was just... It was the stupidest thing ever. But yes, it was always somebody yelling at him, Will be? And he'd be like, right back. Or, or yeah. He'd, <laughs> the one I remember was a bike. He would crash his bike into something, and she yelled, Will be? And he's like, right back. And there was probably stuff like, he, you know, maybe he, he, he dropped something, or I don't know. But it was just, those, that was the whole punchline, going out the commercial after, you know, all those shows. And it was... It sticks with me to this day, though. It wasn't as big as, you know, Captain uh, Chesapeake, but it... Sure, sure. That, that stuff just takes <laughs> you back to the nostalgia. Yeah, I mean, when I was a kid, uh, like, uh, the one I remember is, besides Captain Chesapeake, the ABC would do their uh, Saturday morning cartoons, and I usually would watch most of the ABC cartoons in those days, and they'd always have, like, the claymation people doing like the doo-wop group and all that and then they'd have yeah. like the one where the cowboy whistles for his horse and the horse lands on him and then that the horse would like wink and smile at you it's like ha -ha, look at you, you know? <laughs> and it's like I, I used to love those too it just you know it's it's that you know the nostalgia just washes over you just remembering this stuff well and that's and they don't you know i mean unless i'm mistaken saturday morning cartoons are dead as far as i know like none, much. Of, none of our local stations do a block on Saturday morning anymore. I honestly, I really don't even think they do the after school block because that was the other thing. Like I said, you would race home and you'd have yep. this block from like three o'clock to you know what, like four thirty-five somewhere around there. I, I'm probably mistaken there, but it was or maybe it was two to four. But anyway, they mm -hmm. all had their blocks, and you know. 
and and it and it stunk because as I got older, the block didn't change, but I started getting out of school later, so like mm-hmm. you would miss the first, whatever was the first show on the block, you'd start missing it or you'd miss you know, this or that, and it's like you know, but I, I like I said, Spider Man, X Men, uh, Power Rangers, uh, Turtles, like you would mm-hmm. rush rush home trying to you know if well when I could some. At some points during that, I was bust, so it was, you know, you're yep. sitting on the bus like, come on, Power Rangers is starting, let's go, <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah, like, when I was in Baltimore, I lived across the street from the school, so all I had to oh, do you- was, it, my mom my mom had to be there to make sure I was crossing the street safely, and other than right. that, I was running. Let's go. And, and, you know, like, to this day, the first episode of He-Man, when I knew that was going to come on, that was, I was run. my mom was like, way down the block right. while I was running as fast as I could to get in the front door here. and and I was still early so right. I sat there and then I, I sat there complaining in the living room because I, I ran home so fast I was too early to watch it. well and that was the other thing how many shows did you watch that you didn't care about just because it was not it was the block like that was the other thing um I mean, there might be some I tuned out to, but or some I don't remember now. But generally, unless it was really boring me, I would sit through that block, like whatever mm-hmm. whatever was on. You know, obviously you were. I was hitting it for like He Man, later Spider Man, and Power Rangers. But like, I know at the around the same time I would watch Big Bad Beetleborgs because that was on after Power Rangers, <laughs> and I didn't particularly like it. I thought it was a bit of a mm-hmm. knockoff, but it was on. Um, there's like Exo Squad or something like that. I remember I, I watched a ton of that, just because that was that was like the ritual. That was the like yeah. that's what you did. You came home, you got to watch your tunes before it switched over to Dad's TV. You know, because yep. then Dad would get home from work, Mash would come on or whatever. You know, and mm-hmm. it's like okay, now it's time for me to go play with my toys. <laughs> and yeah, when uh, I'm I'm having a hard time remembering. I know um, the 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 Captain Chesapeake block. That was usually a solid one of everything I used to love. Like yeah. it, it, like I said, started off with He Man. I don't remember what would come up after that, but it would usually be like He Man, and then when Thundercats hit, Thundercats right. would be close after that, and that'd be like, you know, okay, it's like a double feature. They'd have Shira when Shira came on. I would assume most um, most stations bundled those like. Yeah, right there, and I, I want to say they were doing that at, back in those days. And then um, let me think here, because we moved around the time when like Silverhawks hit. Right. So like I I remember Thundercats, and then maybe like occasionally I saw Silverhawks, and then like the last one of the of the afternoon usually was GI Joe. Okay. And the reason I remember that is. The, the end uh, credit song on G.I. Joe, to me, was the saddest thing to hear that right. day. Because I knew signing off. the next thing was going to be, like, the news. Or right. they, they would do, um, like, Gilligan's Island or yep, something yep. like that. And it's like, I'd still watch that, but it's like, uh, you know, like, I want to still see my shows, you know. And it's like that one. And, and then the other one, occasionally, they'd swap it out, either G.I. Joe or it'd be Scooby-Doo. Oh, all right. And it, it's like, all right, I'd sit through those or whatever. Right. But Scooby Doo didn't grab my attention like He Man or Thundercats did back in those days. Right. So, That's what it I mean. was like. All right, it's fun. You know? But it was if it was Batman that. showed up. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, the movie ones were fun. Yeah, I remember Saturday morning. Uh, I think it was when we lived in Michigan back when I was real young. And I don't remember what the last last show on the block was, but yeah, it was like the block ended and then it went to like some. It was it, some one of them televangelists, and you know the, oh, the organs would start up, and it's like oh, outside. Here I come, you know, <laughs> you know. The perfect way to get kids to go outside just that's... show a televangelist after Spider Man, <laughs> and that's what it was. It was just like it was a bro. Oh. That's how it used to be, and my yeah. kids don't get that. They, nope, nope. You know, with streaming and everything else, and it's like. To this, to this day, you know, and I was I was a big Power Rangers guy. Like it was it was He Man, Turtles, uh, and then Power Rangers. 
And then that's when, uh, I guess you could kind of count Spider-Man and comics kind of after that. But to me, the, bi the big three of childhood, I would say, were, were He-Man, Power Rangers, and Turtles. Maybe. Mm -hmm. And finishing up with Power Rangers. Um, nah, you probably didn't watch it. I know you're a bit older, but... Nah, I never got Power Rangers. There, But there was a big arc where uh, the Green Ranger, who of course was my favorite ranger, he's the coolest to this day. Uh, even cooler than the White Ranger, even though they're the same person. He was still cooler as the as Tommy. He was still cooler as the Green Ranger. And there was like a three-part episode where he lost his powers. Um, he lost the, the Green Ranger, and that's what it ended up later. I know I'm boring him. But he ended up later becoming the White Ranger because, <laughs> he, because the Green Ranger power was lost. I missed the last part, whatever, I think it was a three-parter. I missed part three. Mm -hmm. I have never to this day seen part three of that, of that, the la whatever the last part. What I've never seen the last part of that story arc. I know what happened. My, my buddies told me what happened. I couldn't believe it. I thought they were lying. Because, mm -hmm. you know... Especially in those days, like, a character actually losing their power. Like, no, it, it's always, you know, like, it was it was a setup. They captured him, his powers. They, they lit a candle that was taking away the powers, blah, blah, blah. But as a kid, you're going, like, okay, so part three is where the other rangers come in, you know, and set things right again. Mm -hmm. But it didn't. And honestly, that's, you know, looking back, Power Rangers, that's one of the cool things about Power Rangers, that looking back to this day, they did stuff like that. Like when the movie mm -hmm. came out, they killed off all the old uh, dinosaurs, and they didn't come back. They got new mm -hmm. ones. Like it was one of those shows that actually had, like, repercussions. And, you know, mm -hmm. but I thought everyone was messing with me. Cause they're like, oh yeah, you didn't see it. I'm like, no. I'm like, how how they how they stop it? And I was like, oh no, he lost his powers. He's done. I'm like, no. <laughs> you know, Jeez. it's like if someone came, yeah. up to, you know, I was like, it was like, you know, uh, or, or for you, like, like, oh yeah, Superman, he he really did lose his powers in that issue you missed, and he's he's done. You know, it's like, mm -hmm. no, <laughs> you guys are idiots. And then I caught the next day, and it's like, no, he he really is gone. And then eventually came back as yeah. the Light Ranger, but. But you know, but that, but like that, that doesn't happen anymore. You know, they, no. my kids, they miss an episode of something. They, they, it's on streaming usually within 24 hours. At most, you have to wait, you know, till the end of the season. Um, mm -hmm. But you can usually find it somewhere, and and it's just, I don't know. I'm not even saying it's good or bad. It's just, it's just different now. You know, when when I was a kid, the one that got me the most was. Um... Uh, usually on Fridays, my parents, after I got out of school, we'd pack up the car and we'd come up to Pennsylvania because my dad had a, a cabin that we'd spend the weekend in to get away from the city, uh, like usually once a month or whatever. And the, the week they decided to do it was the same week that G.I. Joe was airing their five-part Rise yeah. of Serpentor series. Right. So I'm watching this religiously through the entire week. And the one I never got to see is the final episode of The Rise of Serpentor. And I remember as a kid thinking to myself, is there a way that I can hook the the um, the power cable into my mom's car <laughs> oh, so yeah. I can keep watching this on the drive up because I don't want to miss this. Right. I had all these ideas of how to make that work. And it, obviously I did not try and because right, I knew right. she would be like, don't even do it. You know, it, right. it, it'd be one of those things. But yeah, I, I never to this day have seen that one right. because of that. And I, I always had it like it was the one that got away, you know. And, yeah. and, and like your thing about Power Rangers, I mean, for me, 1986, Transformers, the movie. Yeah. You want to talk about Clint wiping the slate clean. I oh, mean, my God, really when I heard the, when I heard what they thought of the whole, we're going to just get everybody done because the new line has to come out. Right. We got to showcase the. And it's like, you know, it really is like a massacre watching that thing. And at the same time, it still affects me to this day. It's like, that's the only Transformers yeah. thing I ever go back to over and over because of the affecting nature yeah. of it. You know, I mean, it it, 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 it was like, 
there's a there's a planet like Galactus running around eating other planets. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. And then on top of that, you killed Optimus. Now how are we gonna do this? <laughs> you know, and, yeah. and and as a kid, my mind just I couldn't even fathom how they were gonna figure out how to beat this thing at the end because this is like all new territory. So yeah, I I, I get it on that level because yeah. that thing really really affected me as a kid. Oh, it's, so. it's crazy, and like I said, and for those episodes, just because you know, you might get lucky and catch something randomly on a rerun. But usually, I mean, for guys like us, where we went home and watched it every day after school, the it, the chance was greater than not that you were going to catch an episode you've seen on rerun. You know. Yep. Um. So it just it wasn't even a thing, and then. Once a show was done, as far as I recall, it went out of the the block, the lineup. Like they didn't keep shows around, even like they do now with all with the reruns. They were like, nope, we need you know, uh, you know, He Man's done. Uh, you know, Silverhawks is going on. Let's get that into a lineup yeah. like that. Uh, you know, until Cable yeah, they... really got a hold, these you know. Like, now you can turn on Comedy Central and you can catch a block of The Office, you know, two times a day. Uh, King of Queens, I think, is legally has to be shown at least (laughs) once every two hours, you know. But that wasn't how it was growing up at all. And I know know we're preaching to the choir right now because I'm sure all of our viewers are of our age. But it's just, you stop and think about it and it's just like, you know, that was it. Or or VHS, you know, recorded yeah. on TV. If you you know, I was still a bit young to actually get the stuff off TV at that age. But during uh, Mike Young Productions, I was recording every episode of it because mm-hmm. that same fear. Like once it's gone, who knows when we'll see it again? And you know, sure. that did eventually make it out to DVD, but it was still years after the fact. So. Yeah. yeah, and it's all it's all built off that. Like my kids, my kids don't understand why you would want a, a DVD. At a, like they they never ask for them, like for pre- mm-hmm. presents or anything. They're like, like it's all there, it's all here, it's all somewhere. Mm-hmm. It is, yeah. And I'm like, you know, and I can't argue with them. I I don't think we've actually bought a DVD in. In years, I can't. I can't remember the last one that we bought. Like for the family, I'll buy some stuff, obviously here and there because I, because I have that feeling that eventually this will all, maybe that like the stream will not collapse. But I do think that there will eventually be older shows that you can't won't be able to find uh, sure. eventually down the road. So, well, the the other thing about the cartoon block, real fast, and then we can actually get to the actual <laughs> Legends of Grey Skull. <laughs> but but one thing that I really missed about that growing up is there there were times where I I turn on the block right and yeah. I'd be watching it and out of nowhere they they go you know like it would be a Monday I guess you know and they go oh and coming up next brand new show Transor Z. Like what right. the crap is Transor Z? Or or coming up next, Voltron, the Defender of the Universe. Who the hell is Voltron? And, and um and, and there was definitely one. I know they took it off the block, and I was really pissed because I'm like, I like that show. And the next thing I know, I'm listening to the first couple of notes of the Mask theme song. Hmm. So like Mask, uh, mobilized. What, what was it? Mobilized Armored Strike. Command? Armored Strike Command. Yeah. <laughs> And I, I used to watch that, and it, and like I got the toys. I, I, I lucked out. I got the Rhino and Thunderhawk when I was a kid. But it's like, if it wasn't for me just knowing I should just watch this block, right? some of that stuff would have never been in my vision and my periphery of, of pop culture as a kid. And I ended up embracing some of those really, really hard, like Centurions. Um, uh, there was another one I had when, when I was thinking of bringing this up, but I know there were, yeah. there's like tons when I was a kid where it's like all of a sudden they shoehorn this one in and I'm like, this is amazing too. I got to watch it every day. <laughs> well, that's what I'm saying. Like you just watch this stuff just because it was on, it introduced yeah. you and it's, and that's what makes wrap it back around to He-Man. That's what makes me so worried about 
all the push that's coming because you don't have that ability. You really got to go out and get these kids' attention nowadays because there's mm. so much out there and they can dial up anything they want. Mm-hmm. They're and nuts. usually it's YouTube videos nowadays. <laughs> yeah, that's I the mean, thing. That's, so. that's a big part of it, but I mean... But you really got you really got to find a way to hook them, and the ones that you are hooking, you need to make it accessible enough to where they're going to their friends. Like, have you seen this? Because that's about the only that's the only two ways you're going to get them. They're not just going to sit down in the afternoon and watch ABC and be like, "Oh, guys, did you see that new He-Man show?" Of course I did, because I always race home and watch. Like that, exactly, that's not yeah. happening anymore. So I'll, I'll tell you, and I, I've said it on, uh, on the other, my other podcast, uh, council of the first one, I, I know for a fact, if Mattel would actually decide to do a video game, I, they yep. would have something for this because mm-hmm. they, and, and this was something else that I, I this has been and the last, since our last episode, it's been pretty cool here with the geekdom at my house because, <laughs> um, my my kids like the Lego video games, and oh, I yeah. bought them Lego Avengers. Nice. So they couldn't figure out parts of it, so I sat with them, and, and we figured out and solved some puzzles and got to newer levels. And my daughter, by the time we got done with that, she's like, I love Scarlet Witch. She is so cool. And I'm like, okay. that you know. And she goes, I want to watch WandaVision. I go, well, you <laughs> can't. And, and she's like, why? And I go, because you need to watch everything leading up to WandaVision. <laughs> she's in to understand WandaVision. So my daughter is happily, right. happily watching every Marvel movie that I'm throwing at her right now because she wants to learn about this character. And what's really cool is we, we've seen Avengers because mm-hmm. she wanted to watch that. And then we, we watched Age of Ultron the other night. We watched uh, Captain America First Avenger just because she likes Cap. We're in the middle of civil war now and she wants to see all of these things so she can understand this character and the the key was the video game right. that got her so into this and it's like it, the toys yes okay for people like us and and maybe a little younger maybe a little older that's where our end is but the kids nowadays if they can come up with a video game that's going to make my kids go i want to play he-man they are going to happily sit through these shows right now it's all on Mattel to kind of get that rolling, but and and that honestly, for somebody like you, me, I don't think either one of us is going to sit there and go, "Oh, it's a new He-Man game. Pfft, I'm not playing that." Of course, we're going to play the damn thing. It's Absolutely. freaking He-Man, and we've been wanting a good He-Man game for years. I played uh, Tappers of Grayskull for far longer than I ever enjoyed it, which. <laughs> so. Ella, hi, Matt. <laughs> it's like. <laughs> Oh. Tappers Anonymous. Uh, that, was a, that was a bad game. But I also, it, pl- I also played Most Powerful Game in the Universe, which was an amazing side scroller beat 'em up. I mean, that was. I mean, I missed just, out on that one. Yeah, oh, you did. That's. That I, was I, a fun I played game. Tappers. Yeah. I have played Tappers, and I think it took me all of a week before I could go. So yeah. basically, all I keep doing is this I'm good, and I just. That was the end of it yeah, for me. Right. So me too. I maybe lasted a week, and I I'd pop on once in a while. Um, and I, my kid uh, Lucas, he really liked it, but he when that came out, he was also like he had to been like three or so. So I mean, that was like, oh yeah, this is awesome, you know. But I I didn't <laughs> get it. I whatever. But yeah, if they actually yeah, released yeah. like a game, you know mm-hmm. that uh, I would eat it up. I would. I would buy a new system to get a good He-Man game. You know, we have we have a Switch, but that's the most next gen we are. Um, mm-hmm. And it's it's always hit or miss whether those kind of games come to Switch. So, but I would consider him buying in a PlayStation, a new PlayStation or Xbox, whatever they're on now, seventy two, um, <laughs> to play it. I bought I bought a Game Boy Advance because of the the. A 2002 game that yeah. came out on it. I only I had a Game Boy Color at that point or whatever. I don't remember which one it was. Maybe it was Color, and uh, and that came out for the Game Boy Advance. I'm like, 
I need a Game Boy Advance now. You know? That's, sure. Yeah. But I know I'm a fool, so. I I would, too. I, mm-hmm. I actually, I was eyeing up the Miles Morales Spider-Man game because my son loves yeah. Miles Morales Spider-Man. And I, it's like I can't, I can't justify that cost right now. But if if I knew there was also a He-Man game that I wanted to play, yeah. and that that would that would be the one, the clincher, and then I'd have to start a GoFundMe. So right, yeah, right. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. <laughs> no, I agree. They got to We've said it before, time and time. They've got to get on the electronic side of this generation. There's no way oh, yeah. around it. They need a video game. They need, uh, you know, well they. They've got comics coming out. Those should be digital as well. But they just they need they need an online approach, and that that's mm-hmm. that's the end of it. I mean, there's no other way to connect with the whether you feel it's right or wrong. I'm fine with it personally. I don't think it's ruining America or anything else. But it's just where the this generation is. That's how you connect with them. So. Definitely. All right, so let's move on here. We've got... Uh, I'll do some news. Uh, I'll pull an image out of my hat. We need my knee. Mo. PowerCon! September 11th and 12th, 2021. Anaheim, California, United States of America. I know this news shocked me. Um, yeah. I was I was getting worried because I looked back and tickets have usually been on sale for about a month or so at this point in the year. And PowerCon's always been in the fall. It's always been August, September, that area. But it's usually, looking back, it was usually on sale like uh, end of February, beginning of March. And obviously, with everything going on in the world, uh, the long, the later it got, the more I felt it was going to be canceled, or it just virtual, like last year. Yep. But then all of a sudden, news came out uh, late last week, and they are going. There is going to be limited capacity. Uh, ticket prices have increased uh, based on the limited capacity. Um, the international fans are going to have a little harder time, it looks like. Um, they're going to have to jump through a few more hoops just to get into the country. I don't even know if that's, you know, um, it is what it is at this point. But they are planning on holding it. And so this past Saturday, the 10th, uh, the hotel block opened up. So you can go on to the PowerCon website, link down below, and get your hotel room. And they said around April 15th, um, which is four days from the recording of this episode, probably about two from the time I get it out, um, <laughs> they should release the exclusives for this year. And there will be three of them. Um, and at the same time, the tickets will go on sale. So, yeah, like, I'm I'm ecstatic. I didn't think it was going to happen, and to see that at least now, barring a major catastrophe, things are actually on to get together fills me with some hope. How about you, Sean? I was shocked, and, uh, and then automatically I was scared to death that I wasn't going to be able to go, and then I was uh, very surprised that yeah the the window is open yeah. and i am <laughs> um i bar, like you said barring any kind of a crazy event or whatever that that right. makes them go to you know the digital show like last year or the virtual show like last year yeah i uh, we will be there so yes. hey <laughs> legends of gray school podcast <laughs> is planning on attending um, so come up and say hi, or come up and punch me in the face. Whatever you want to do, just you know, I'm do gonna, it with, do it with some kind of like you know purpose. I guess <laughs> I'm gonna do both. I know you are, <laughs> I, but uh, I didn't mean it, buddy. Um, uh, I, no, like it, it's 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 awesome because yes. it it does have that feeling of okay, you can finally say things are starting to feel a little less what we've gone Crazy. through it feels like we've gone to the other side of it a little bit more mm-hmm. uh, by knowing this is going to happen and 
you know, hoping to meet all of the, uh, the people that we've not only been able to talk to through the show, but also, you know, any fans that yep. end up showing up and getting to say hi to them and stuff. That would be, it, it's, I'm excited. Skelly, Skelly Vader. Looking at yeah. you, bud. Yeah. Looking forward to that. Definitely. Uh, He's out in California already. He's set. He just has to go. <laughs> Yeah, hopefully, instead of hopefully the fair and everything else. Hopefully he doesn't mind us revealing his state. Um, but <laughs> California's a big state. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, I, I think it's great. What do you think about that price point? Did you see the, uh, I've heard a lot, they're getting a lot of flack for raising the price of the admission. Um, what, what do you think about that? What Did was the see? price last? What was the price previously? I want to do, say. Do you remember? I want to say it was twenty-five a day or th- um, forty for the weekend. That'd be, yeah, mm. sounds about right. And then so it's, it's a two. It's, it's a two-day show. It's September. Yeah. It's it's a Saturday Sunday. It always has been. Um, and this year it's going to be forty a day, sixty for the weekend. Well, number one, I know personally, I've gone to the Baltimore Comic Con Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. almost every single year since uh, 2005. Yeah. And that show steadily has increased the price every time I've gone. And and that's to get not, you know, like not only to, to have the space down at the convention center, but you're getting the people in there. And I know this this might be a little different because I don't know how much they're going to be able to bring people in and all that because of the restrictions going on. But, you know, it's like, it's on. There's that part of me that's just like, for somebody like me who's never been able to go and I've wanted to go for as long as I've known this convention is around, um, it's like 60 bucks to me is like, that's, really? You're going to complain about 60 bucks? That's a drop in the bucket to me. I mean, uh, uh I mean, obviously, San Diego Comic Con's a whole different beast, but you're talking 100, 200, you know. Uh, oh. Yeah, no. To me, and, and really, it's like, okay, if you're only going, like, no one's spending 80 bucks because you're not, if you're going both days, you're getting the two day for 60. So the max yes. you're paying is 60. Otherwise, you're paying 40 to go a single day. Sure. That is nothing to get access to a show that had number one, like you said, they will have celebrities. I mm-hmm. I can't I don't know who they have not released any of that yet. Again, they're hoping to release all that soon, but they will have guests. They'll have writers, voice actors, somebody. They'll have people from the industry mm-hmm. that have worked on these shows that we want to meet. So right off the bat. You know, you can't compare this to your local toy show or comic show that you go to down at the Civic Center that's just Mm -hmm. vendors. Like, this is an actual con. They have celebrities. They have people. They have panels, you know. So, with them having to limit their capacity, which we all saw coming... It seems like a very negligible increase. Like you said, that just seems like normal, you know, keeping up with inflation. Yeah. You know, well, not to mention and, they missed a year. Yeah. They did not yeah. charge anybody for the virtual convention this past year. You know, mm-hmm. yes, if you wanted your toys, your merchandise, your shirts, what your exclusives, you paid for those. But that was it. And yes, they, some of that they got on profit from and that's really the only reason that they are still able to come back this year yeah you know they did (sighs) not make anything off the show they still held the panels and they charge us nothing to attend them on zoom exactly and and it's like was was that cool to be able to do that last year yeah it was kind of cool to be involved compared to oh, we're going to hear about it secondhand when all these panels in the weekend are over or, you know, if people were actually like, you know, I, I know like Steve and Jeremy from Podcast, they, they yeah. actually had a little bit of a behind the scenes on their Facebook pages and stuff when they went. But, you know, to me, it's like, this is such a specialized convention. 
Mm-hmm. And, you know, like the, it's, it's, it's very much our con. Right. It's there for anyone who is a fan and who loves masters of the universe. So it's like 60 bucks to me is still like, that's not going to make yes. or break me needing to do that. The right. only thing that'll make or break me is the airfare to get out yeah. there at this point. And that's it, you know? And uh, it's like, no, like I, and especially for two days of doing that and right. depending who you get to meet and then you get to meet people in the community. It's like, you know, take my money, you know, show me that gift and take my money, exactly. you know, like 60 bucks. Uh, I'd be happy to pay that money and know that I can actually get to say hi to all these various people that we've gotten to know. And, so. and for the airfare, you know, guys, all you out there, sir, Priceline, Expedia, set up alerts, everything else, Southwest, United, their websites, they all do it. You know, lowest mm-hmm. fare type things, put your destination, your travel dates, and they will alert you when it drops and just wait till it hits a price that you're comfortable with. I mean, according yep. to PowerCon's own website, we have 152 days, 19 hours, 6 minutes, and 23, 22, 21, 20, 19 seconds <laughs> before it uh, kicks off. So we got plenty. You got plenty of time to sit there and wait for the deals to come out. Exactly. Um, last thing I want to bring up about PowerCon, actually, second to last thing. Um. If you go to their website, thepowercon.com, make sure you put the uh, hyphen in there. They showed off a little bit of new art. You know, every year they kind of got a different theme going on. I know this year they're going to celebrate She-Ra's 35th, which is basically what we missed out on last year. Um, And then they said they're also going to honor kind of... It feels like they're kind of doing the origins type thing. They're trying to get back to kind of the roots of everything. Um, and so they had these really nice He-Man and Skeletor drawn up on their website that, uh, are looking very vintage, very classic, very, very strong. What do you, what do you think of that artwork, Sean? I think it looks like Gerald, uh, Perel. It is. I could be wrong. It is absolutely Gerald Perel. Gerald Perel. That's my guy. (laughs) <laughs> did and he is doing I don't know if he's doing more but he's done this artwork for PowerCon of He-Man and Skeletor so, that's been revealed so far um, that is awesome if I remember correctly just... uh, you those are the prints you got right that you showed off a few episodes ago yeah he did the Alcala yep. the, the old school mini comic version and it's like his style works in any because this is more like the way that these two look, it's it's channeling um, Earl Norm. Oh, absolutely! Me. And that just makes me so happy. Like when the minute that I pulled that up, I'm like, I need a print of this it right is. now. Like, <laughs> oh, I, I, and I bet you they'll have them. I bet you will be able one. to get them. That um, would be the swag I get then. That, that would make me the the happiest to just get that. So and now you've got it up in front of you, right? Yep. And unfortunately, the image I have on the screen is the is the kind of banner one that they that PowerCon put out there. So the uh, YouTube viewers aren't seeing it. But go to the website, look at it. This power sword he did. That is the best merge of filmation mm-hmm. and the vintage, you know, kind of Agreed. toy. I love that power sword. No, I. Uh, That is what I want to see from a movie. I want that power sword. That screams power sword to me. It's filmation, but just with a little extra detail that takes it Mm -hmm. to the next level. It's still kind of got the open cross guards, but it's uh, it's just it's it's wonderful. Guys, go check it Mm -hmm. out. That power sword is one of the best drawn I've seen in a long time. Yeah, like, I know in the community we have, obviously, there's Axel, there's Nate Barch doing oh. a, a lot of good work and stuff. Excellent but work. every single time that Gerald Perel, and I, I feel bad because I kept calling him Gerard. I yeah, you, I, I, I do that every single freaking time. You're still time. hesitating. I can hear the hesitation. I'm trying. Every time I'm trying, you say Gerald. Because I always slip, and I, I hate doing that to people because yeah. I've always had the problem with people mispronouncing my name ever since I can remember. Mm-hmm. But but he 
he brings back this feeling of what I loved about Masters more yeah. than any other artist to date, other than Earl Norum or um, or uh, William George yeah. would, you know. And and just looking at this, it's like, oh my god, yeah. it's it's he he man is in such an like an epic heroic pose, and I love Skeletor's right behind him, and he just looks calculating and devious, and it's like, right. yes, no. this is this is it right here they're built his musculature his anatomy looks phenomenal mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. and just it, it's so great it's great work i can't wait I, i'm hoping they have a whole bunch of swag with that stuff on it so mm -hmm. Agreed. Um, last thing power con wrapping up three mystery exclusives what are we thinking I've been throw, racking my brain. And throw one I, out there. Throw one out there. Uh, you think we'll go back and forth? Oh Lord, because I, I figure they're going to be tied to origins. Okay, and, so we're looking at origin. That is that is their claim to fame right now. And the only thing I can figure is if they aren't going to do origins, they're going to throw us a huge curveball with one of the masterverse things. Uh, that possibility. Yep. Um. So I I agree so far. I think. There's going to be an Origins exclusive. I think there's going to be a Masterverse exclusive. Um, mm -hmm. And then we got a third item. So here's what I'm going to throw out there. Mm -hmm. And and uh, I'm okay if I'm wrong with this, but the artwork alone, the, the Gerald Perel, yep. got it right, Gerald Perel <laughs> artwork has made me start thinking, I think maybe they might try to do a Masterverse original looking he-man that's fully articulated without it looking like an origins figure same with skeletor so that'll be that'll be two of my guesses and then the third one i think okay. Okay. Did, did you want to do it where you go back well, and forth, I can, one by I, one? well number one i i hadn't landed on what i thought they would do for masterverse but you saying that because we've already heard that masterverse is supposed to be like like the first waves, you know, revelation, mm -hmm. you know, and then I, I think, I think you hit the nail on the head there. I'm betting they're going to do like a vintage inspired deluxe He-Man Skeletor, but I think it's going to come in a two pack because they really okay. like so the multi one slot then. So I'm yeah, betting the math. I'm going with you. I think master versus exclusive is going to be a He-Man versus Skeletor two pack. And you're going to get something very vintage inspired. I, I mm -hmm. think you're I think you're on the right track there. Um, like I said, I think there's going to be an Origins exclusive. I'm not. Uh, oh, that's another one. I'm really don't know where, where they're going to go with that. Uh, they're it's obviously going to be something vintage. Like all their exclusives are not really vintage, but something specifically for us. Because all their look at their exclusives so far. You got the Alcala. He Man and Prince Adam, you got the Lords of Power, and then you've got um, the Keldor and Cronus uh, two pack. Oh, and then Walmart's mm -hmm. got the Flocked Panther. So every time yeah. they do an exclusive, it is like the let's reach deep for the fans. Uh, you know, I'm almost. I'm almost wondering, and this is just completely in the dark, but building off last year and the fact that they're still going to celebrate She-Ra, I'm going to say it's going to be an Origins uh, vintage-inspired rooted hair Catra. And that is that is a variant that people have been chasing for a long time. Because we have never gotten a toy Catra since the 80s. Hmm. I could see that, and, and yeah, I, the fact that it's like the both sides same coin or, or mm -hmm. uh, opposite sides same coin. I want to say, I I'll actually throw a, a curveball at you. What if it's Swiftwind? The internet would lose their shit. It, I mean, they did the Shira. What if they What if they go there and Swiftwind is now like an exclusive? Because but wasn't there? Like, there's the filmation version, but then there's the mini comic version, if I remember right. Or, like, the original well, toy I just, version. I was just about to say, if they're going yeah. to do it, if they would have to do the pink rooted hair yeah. Swiftwind. Yeah. And then yeah. 
the general release would be the pra- uh, like Shira, unrooted hair and yep. white, you know, to white me, traditional swift wind. It, yeah, the filmation, right? Swift wind. So you know, that's oh, ooh, yeah. I could see uh, that. I could see that too. I like it. <laughs> Um, that, I think that would be nuts because that that is a contrast, at least. Uh, yeah. I mean, like the the rooted hair catcher makes sense too, though. Um, I'm gonna go really out. I haven't say so much out on the limb, but I'm gonna say the last exclusive would be uh, from the Mega Constructs line because they had the Battle Bones a couple years ago, and that thing is still in high demand. You're that price is going mm-hmm. up and up every year. Um, people love the Mega Constructs, um, and I, I'm gonna say uh, for the exclusive. I'm trying to think of what the Talon Fighters to Bash of Source to mainstream attack tracks to mainstream. I don't think they would have... I, I'd want to say they do something like the Filmation-style attack track, but I know that's got to be rights up the wazoo, and I don't mm-hmm. see them reaching there. <sighs> see, all the other vehicles I think would sell to us. I'm not even sure what vehicle it would be, but I, I think it's going to be a Mega Constructs vehicle. Mm-hmm. Man, you go ahead with yours. I might I might have a more specific guess after that. For me, it would like I I just like the idea of it being there's like looking at it, it's like there's He Man and Skeletor. You have yeah. that it, maybe like one offs of them instead of the two pack, like you were saying. So mm-hmm. I'm going by two of my spots are already those two. Okay, okay. And then the third would probably be I'll just throw Swift Wind out there just as a hey, it's a it, you could do the original version from the toy line. Or right. and then when they release it in, in wide release, then you have the filmation looking one well that, well then just help me with my conundrum if they were All right, I'll go, help you. <laughs> if they were gonna do a vehicle as an exclusive what would it be i mean that's it's mm. i don't master's vehicles were so iconic to me i mean even battle bones was iconic but i feel as the carrier it was kind of like you know it was kind of it's kind of low tier out of the vehicle but everything they, else huh have they have they I feel really stupid asking this. Have they done the battle ram though? Yeah, it just came out. I've actually okay, got okay, it. okay, um, okay. I haven't uh, been keeping up with that one as much as other ones, but because I, I, I know they did the wind raiders. So. If you had listened to my wife is going to kill me podcast, their episode two oh nine, they had a very handsome guest host on there who showed off his battle ram mega constructs. During the thanks UPS guy, I segment. I actually have noticed that they haven't released an episode since you because I, I think you raised it to I, a whole new bar and I had to get. I broke the whole anymore. thing. You broke it. You broke, broke the mold it. that day. Or Steve and Travis um, were on vacation, and uh, <laughs> there could be that as well. That's so. my. <laughs> they may have gone um, live earlier today, uh, but yes, Battle Ram Point Dread. Uh, Talon Fighter, Rotom. Spider. See, I think Spider. That's where my mind went, but I think he's too popular. I think he's. I think he's too. But I think everything at this point is too popular. Like, I can't think of. Laser Bolt. I'm going with Laser Bolt. Laser Bolt. To to me, that's not even one that. Like, when I was a kid, that was so far near the end of the line for me that it's like if if they said that's the exclusive, I'd go. Oh, and then it. there's He-Man. <laughs> I love that thing, though. I love the laser <laughs> bolt. That's a, but yes, it came out towards the end of the line. Not a lot of people knew about it. A lot of people think it's a dorky concept. I just thought it looked cool. You know, the red mm-hmm. and the pop-up and the big guns. Laser bolt. I'm going laser bolt. There we go, right. guys. There we go. There's your power con talk. <laughs> oh, let's see let's what see we got. Let's see if right this week. Let's see what happens. Me, 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 my, me, mo. Faking Filmation, a new film by Rob McCallum, coming soon. Sean, you check this out? I have, and I actually, I did back it within the, I want to say the first 48 hours. Nice. So I am, I am definitely on board with this, and um, 
you know, the, the way I look at it is I've, I've heard the stories of how uh, James really wanted to show it off at PowerCon and the cease and desist really ruining it for him and everything. Mm-hmm. And it's like, you know, you can't not give that guy this win. That's all the way that I look <laughs> at it. I, I, with, with how much, with how much he's done in the community and the wealth of knowledge he's imparted upon the fandom with all the different books he's come out with. It's like, you, you, you feel good knowing you're doing something for a good person in this case, you right. know? And so, yeah, I, I was happy to do it. Yep. I, I backed within the first, uh, first day. Um, it went live pretty early in the morning for me, actually, if I recall, but uh, but yeah, what this is, is obviously, as most people know, James Etok, along with uh, Dusan Mitrovic and um, and others, I really need to get the full list down one of these days, they created a Filmation-inspired cartoon. They spent roughly four years sourcing clips and dialogue and everything else you can think of and cutting and splicing and tracing over um and creating their own cartoon all the audio is a hundred percent pulled from the vintage filmation audio it's they they went back and they found clips if they needed to have john Irwin saying Hello, Tila, how are you? They had to find an episode where he did that or where he said part of it. And, I mean, just an extraordinary amount of work. Um, And I know they dug deep. They used some Brave Star references and trace over with He-Man and really just trying to make it look like a Filmation episode. And they didn't do this to make any money off of it. They didn't do this to, to, you know... Make the, they did it because they love filmation. I mean, James can pinpoint a transformation sequence just by... I don't know if you saw Sean, but he literally did this the other day. Someone put a clip up of just the transformation, you know, just the from the by the power of grade school to the I have the power. And he nailed what episode it came from. Mm-hmm. And it was even a trick one. It was it was uh, it was uh, from a Shira episode. Shira makes a promise, and he just <laughs> he he, mm-hmm. he says he can do that. With next time we have him on, we're gonna have to test him because he says he can do that with any of the He-Man transformations. You play him just a transformation part, he says there are no two that are alike. They all have these slightly different timing cues that he can pick up on. I mean, the man is a filmation genius. He's got all this stuff memorized. You know, you're very rarely are going to stump him on anything. And their whole plan was just, let's show this at PowerCon and let's put it out on YouTube. Like, they never wanted to make any money off of it. And they're, they're still not. Yes, they have a Kickstarter, but they're not trying to make any money. They just want their story to be told. And that's what it comes down to, because like Sean said, the day before they were supposed to show it at PowerCon, NBC Universal, who owns the Filmation rights right now, sent him a cease and desist letter that if he showed it, they would sue him. And so he was forced to not show it in its entirety. Um, and, and it's just kind of been there since then. That was two years ago now. And he hasn't Mm -hmm. been able to do anything with it. So basically what... And you know Rob McCallum. He did Nintendo Quest. He did Action and Figure Adventure. He did the Power of Grayskull documentary. Great guy. Good body of work. And basically what their plan is... Is they are going to do a documentary on... uh, James' journey to create this cartoon. And in the process... Uh, we will also get to see the cartoon finally. So it's kind Mm -hmm. of uh, a workaround, but basically by taking the documentary angle, it opens, it it, it protects them. Even though they weren't going to do, try and make any money off it anyways, you know, this adds the layer to protect them and prove that they're not trying to make any money. Yeah. Um, Yeah, go ahead. 
Uh, on top of that, I know um, uh, I I heard an interview with Rob on uh, I think it was the People of Eternia podcast. If I, I hope I, I said that right. And um, they they interviewed him exclusively, and he said it's 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 yes, the core of the story is going to be about James and yeah. this journey. But then he also is examining what we started the show off yes. about animation the yep. cartoons we grew up with the and and animation throughout the history of animation yep. is also going to be touched on which i think is also going to be awesome to see oh yes and you know it's like i mean that here if it wasn't for the animation side of things we wouldn't be here doing what nope. we're doing right now you know i mean it's like that's what caught it like wildfire and for us in the 80s perfect segue because that's where i was going so they 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 threw out a few goals when they start launch the Kickstarter. First one was thirty thousand dollars, and that was basically like, okay, you'll get the story of James in in faking, you know, the return of Faker cartoon, and about like filmation and animation. Um, and then if they hit fifty thousand, we'll get the documentary that they really want to tell, where they really branch off and try and go to all these different animation houses and really because i mean james isn't just i mean yes he is the filmation he-man expert but talk to him about real ghostbusters talk to him about i mean a lot of other cartoons he you know even uh, the other filmation cartoons obviously but even outside of that he just he knows a lot i mean that's the only mm -hmm. way to put it he knows a lot about everything animation so if they get to fifty they they're going to tell this bigger story um so they hit that so their initial goal is thirty thousand. They hit that in less than forty eight hours. They hit the thirty thousand goal. So this thing mm -hmm. is coming, guys. If you're like me and Sean, we pledged. If you guys have pledged, you're getting this. You're at least getting the base version. Um so now as of today, it's been five days. That they have launched, they need to get to fifty thousand to tell the big story. They are currently sitting at forty six thousand three hundred and eight. No, I'm sorry, it just updated. Forty six thousand three hundred and ninety two dollars. So, and we have twenty four days to go. Within a week, they are three thousand. Seven hundred dollars away from their big goal. I mean, that is just amazing. I knew this thing was gonna do well. I honestly, I didn't think it was gonna do this like this well this fast. I thought we'd hit the fifty thousand. I thought it would like be like you know last week or so. Okay, here we go. We made it. But the 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 love and the support from all the community has just been outstanding, and I want to congratulate these guys because. They they are they are hitting stuff left and right. Well, it's just the same as like you know in the in the opening of the episode, and I became He Man, the mm -hmm. most powerful man in the universe. And he just punches every freaking goal out of his way within a few <laughs> days. You know, it's like it it it, it shows. Okay, the, the way I looked at this, um, since it's getting the the because on top of that, uh, Kickstarter did note this campaign yep. as being it was one, one of, it, the most popular rob oh, was yeah. saying the other day he showed that off but also one that they that kickstarter endorses right. to back now mm -hmm. which that's awesome on how many different fronts right and you know it's like the other thing too is uh you know like the the idea that this is giving people who love filmation that like what if there was one extra one in the vault that nobody ever got right. to see? And I know, I know this isn't the case. I know it's it's fan made, but it, it's like what if? And for not only uh, for the fans out there, but Mattel, but you know NBC Universal, all this stuff. It's like look at all the people that yep. are already clamoring for this in the first forty eight to seventy two hours to bust this goal wide right. open. And now we're heading for a second goal. And we're probably, by the end of the week, going to be saying there's a third goal now. They, so, it, it, once again, it, it's that 
we want new stuff. Right. We want more things for these characters that we've we've grown to love and we know, you know? Right. And well, give us that's awesome. That, give us something that honors the past instead of tearing it down or making it the butt of a joke, you know? Definitely. Um, and and Rob did throw out there that there is now a mystery stretch goal at uh, 65000 So he hasn't re- revealed what that will be yet. Um, but it's, it's coming. So if we get past 50, there's something else out there. So, I mean, like he's, uh, like he said, the more, the better, keep it coming. The more they get, the quicker they can get this out. I mean, you're still looking at probably a minimum of a, a, probably a year and a half, two years. I mean, it takes, like they have not started yet. They need this funding to start filming. So, I mean, you've got a ways, but it's happening. It's there. Rob has done successful campaigns already. You guys have nothing to worry about. Get over there and support this if you're interested at all in seeing it. Um, lots of great rewards. You'll get. You can get digital copies. You can get um, physical copies. There's still some VHSs available if you want to get it on VHS. <laughs> um, Old school. Yeah, and and they're. I know they're cooking. Uh, they're working on always working on some other stretch goals and stuff so support it uh the last thing i'll throw out there is i will actually be sitting down with rob uh this coming wednesday so if you guys have any questions head over to our facebook page i'm gonna put a post up there or email us at logpod85 at gmail.com if you have anything you'd like me to talk to him about while uh he's on the show so um yeah, I think that covers faking filmation. I'm really excited. I've been waiting for this to go live, and uh, good best of luck to both of those guys. I don't think they need it anymore, but yes, good luck yeah. to them as well yeah. because they already have luck on their side the way it looks right now. <laughs> All right, last thing. Uh, oh yeah, Tila. <laughs> Tila <laughs> Tweeterhead. Um, this is this is the. Th- Third in the Legends series, they're calling it. Uh, Tila, Captain of the Royal Guard. Uh, it's a statue. Let me pull up its stats here. There she is. Uh, one f- Tweeterhead presents the Tila Legends. One fifth scale maquette. This is the third release in the Legends line. Uh, Tila measures close to 18 and a half inches tall when fully assembled figure in base. Fully sculpted polyresin statue comes equipped with Tila's classic sword and shield, as well as two different portraits, a modern with ponytail and the classic updo. Uh, Tila comes on a Castle Grayskull themed base, descending down a staircase into the dungeon towards the Dwell of Souls. On the back of the base lurks a monstrous surprise that's a fun nod to the classic playset. The exclusive edition comes with an additional right arm holding her iconic Staff of Ka, along with everything else advertised. Uh, with the exclusive, you have four different ways you can display Tila. Uh, both versions of the Tila maquette will retail for $475 US dollars and are ready for pre-order starting Thursday, April 8th, so it's live now. Uh, if you pay in full, you will receive $25 off. Uh, exclusive Mm. edition will be 600 standard edition, uh, size to be determined. So 475 bucks gets you this Tila statue, plenty of different poses, um, that's really baffling. Uh, reading through that, the, the exclusive and the standard are the same price. Mm-hmm. I mean, other yeah. other than it's selling out, why wouldn't you buy the exclusive? <laughs> I mean, that's I guess, true. I guess that's their plan. Like, let's make sure we're not hung with exclusives, but it's still a little weird. Mm-hmm. I I mean I'm not a I'm not a statue guy. There's definitely some statues that if I could I would have loved to have them on the shelf. Mm-hmm. My cats would have probably knocked them off and killed them already by now, which that would have been you know 
whatever. Mm -hmm. But um, this one, I really liked the overall feel of it because it, it, it's like a nice update to her. Yeah. In the design of it. And uh, when I looked at it, I'm like, it's it's very Tila, but there's yes. also some nice little, little details that they're throwing in there. And uh, again, for me being who I am when it comes to Masters in general, it's like, yes, I know there's always that, you know, here's the classic look for all these characters. But when I got to be older, I'm like, well, what if you, what if you did a little something? What if you do this? What if you, and, and it's not, you know, me wanting to step on the feet of any creators before it's just mostly, well, we know what we had, what else right. did we do? You know? And, and this is a really nice, to me, a, a really good, you don't, ever look at that and not mistake her to be Tila. She's Tila. There's no way around it, but I do like the little the little bits that make her that version of Tila. Right. I guess is the way I want to uh, I want to explain it. No, it's greatly it it is beautifully done. It's Tila through you look at that and there's no there's no like, oh, could that? No, it's it's Tila. I like mm -hmm. I like the way they did the boots. They they in this way a lot of them are going. They did it with their Shira too. It's like the, the they look high heel, but they're not really. They're more like platforms, which makes sense, and it still mm -hmm. gives you that profile of the heels, mm -hmm. you know. Um, yep. I like I like the fur trim around the shoulders. It's very man at arms esque, which I, I think I like that too. I think that's very appropriate for her. Mm -hmm. uh, the base looks great. The purple tentacle reaching up is great. But for but for me personally, I wish that they would like stuff like this. Like this is what the Mondo figures should be, because I still think a lot of the Mondo figures are too far out. They're too different. But I, I'd love to see. I don't know. I, I I guess it's just my brain. For me, if I if I want a statue, I want something iconic. I want it to be like, uh, I think it was Pop Culture Shock. They did those filmation statues that look yeah. straight out of the cartoon. Like, yeah. if I'm doing a statue, give me that. Like, to me, these kind of designs are great for, like, a new a new comic book design. or a, Like, if this was movie, Tila? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Sign me up. But as cool as she is, it doesn't make me go... It's not even tempting to me to go, I'm going to drop 500 bucks on her. Like, there's... Like, no, it looks amazing. And if... You know, maybe if I had all the disposable income I could want, I probably would. But mm -hmm. to me, for a statue line, get, I need something like... I can't, straight out of a mini comic, straight out of a story, straight out of something, you know? And maybe that's yeah. just me. But like, no. but give me this as a print, like like you got those Ger Gerald Perel. Mm -hmm. If if they released just this right here as a print, again, absolutely, I would love to hang a print of that on my wall. She looks amazing, but just for the high end statue, it doesn't do it for me. Well, I, I feel like this one compared to the sideshow ones that they had out, the He Man and Skeletor mm -hmm. that way. Like Skeletor, you knew it was Skeletor, but with the He-Man one in that case, it was it was definitely sidestepped more right. than a few sidesteps to make it look that way. Because I don't associate He-Man to have long flowing hair like Thor, right? And he had more that, dark in his costume, that so big it felt shoulder pauldron exactly. Yeah. And it, it was it was more almost like a let's update the movie look right. than it was let's do a traditional He-Man and. So in this way, it's like, to me, if you, if you it, like, I like the Shira design they did as the, the costume, but I didn't like the, the initial statue either or whatever. Right. But in this case, it's like, this looks so close to home to me that I'm like, I'm good. And I like, like no, you it, said, the, the accent with the fur and all mm -hmm. that. The minute I saw that, I started smiling because yeah. I'm like, that's the kind of stuff I would do just right. because I would be curious to see what it would look like. And then once I saw it, I'd be like, I'm drawing it like that from now on because I like that. That'd be my signature of this is my version of her or whatever. No, and I, I will give it that. This is the best 
interpretation statue I've ever seen. Like you said, all mm-hmm. those other ones, there's just certain things about it. It's like, eh, that doesn't. But this one, hands down, is the best new design of sure. any of the ones they've done. I will 100% agree with that. That That is without a doubt. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I still enjoy the, uh, the, the Hordak they did too, though. Yeah, that I, 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 I admired yeah. the detail of them. And, it's a, it's and a nice stuff. detail. That's kind of the sheer one for me. Like it's it's a nice detail and everything, but there's so much. For sheer, there's so much derivative of uh, Wonder Woman. I feel, and that's what kills me. It's kind of like someone's like, "Well, what if she were uh, had a more Wonder Woman costume?" And mm-hmm. like I get the analogies, but it's too much. Whereas, like you said, this they actually it feels like someone. And I, I didn't say who designed it, unfortunately, but it feels like someone who is intimate with Masters designed this, where they are I, pulling that stuff. I I don't know all the names, but I know Nate Barch actually had a hand in it, and he posted it on Facebook just the other night. I was wondering his, uh, if it could have been him. Yeah, it's Nate Barch design. I, I think it is, and and he uh, he listed off the people that worked with him on it. And, um, yeah, so for, he's one of those artists that every time I see his interpretation of something, I'm like, this is the version I've been waiting for because it feels like an adult version of what I've been wanting to watch for how long. I've right. seen him do updates to He-Man. I've seen him do them to, to uh, She-Ra. And most of his decision-making in his designing of here's, here's a, a revamp idea – usually make me go oh you're you're right in the lane of where i want to be with this too so that's also part of why i I enjoy this version i think quite a lot i completely agree Uh, but yeah there's there's many designers uh, other than just nate that also worked on it and yeah i uh, kudos to them i i honestly i think it's a great piece i i unfortunately will not be able to pick that up because of uh, power con uh and also I, i'm not a statue guy but yeah. um uh, if i was if this like you said I, I that's something i wanted to say quick if this was the mondo line i would be buying this because i i i have not bought a single mondo figure i'm not really a huge fan of what they've done there's certain characters that they they like i i didn't mind their horde act um uh, Man at Arms is amazing looking, but most of the other ones I'm just like, okay. And, right. and and I'm not trying to I'm not trying to disparage anybody working on those as well because I know Emiliano is working with Mondo on those designs. But it's like the, it, when you when you didn't pull off He Man for me at least that that He Man that they brought out was not the He Man that I would want no. on my shelf then automatically I'm like, I'm not going to really look at this line any further because if you can't get the core guy that I want first, I'm not worrying about the rest of this at this point. And uh, Nate did say, the only name he called out uh, was David Ego. So Yeah, okay. okay. Uh, or Igo, maybe. I-G-O. Igo, probably. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so we know those two worked on it. Beautiful job. Um, I've only got the front shot up here, but... Uh, Scrolling through that just reminded me, guys, check out the rear shot. They nailed Tila from all angles. So. <laughs> if you want to remember that filmation, that tingling, filmation so drop down. At 3 o'clock in the afternoon, yeah. <laughs> all right. That uh, was your, your five years old going, puberty is going to be awesome. <laughs> All right, Sean. I that, think I think we're uh, we're an hour fifteen, and I think we hit some listener questions, and we wrap this baby up. Yeah. So when I put my dumb face out there, people actually uh, respond. So I'm gonna have to keep doing this love now. Love your dumb face. Um. <laughs> so first question, uh, and I know Manny posed this at me. Manny Gonzalez. Manny. Gonzalez. He he guy. hasn't. He was he was mad that I missed his question how long ago, so he's got two for us today. All right, let's hit it. First question. First question is, if you could change one thing about the 2000 series that we didn't get to see that you wanted to see, what would it be? Well, to complete that poem from my side of things, it would have been a season three. 
That is how I I, yeah. I I wanted to see the horde. I really wanted to see the horde wreck Eternia, and I wanted to see He Man with his back against the wall trying to fight mm-hmm. them off sure. with the rest of the sure. masters. I really like when they gave us that season, that series ending with fighting uh, Serpos. It's like I need more. You guys are pushing this to the. This is what I've been waiting to see, and that's it. So season three is always going to be my answer to that question. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Season three, uh, Shira. I always thought that they really needed to get Shira in there, and that's. Uh, I think that was a big misstep. I think it's a big misstep not working her in sooner. Um, as you know, kind of dropping hints here and there, just having a second sword flowing around, like, like that sort of thing. And I think it's a shame we never got her. So, Shira, Shira, Shira. I guess if I if I could say the opposite, what what I want, not want to see, I don't need more variants of He-Man. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, like oh, they, I, was thinking I know that but... they had the horde armor they were they were tinkering with and all that. If they would have gone further. And it's like, okay, if you want to, want to go there and the traditional, I'm good. We don't need episodes uh, where where he has the battle armor given to him by, uh, what's his name? The um, machines and men kind if, of thing or if, the samurai armor and all that. If it's, so. if it's done properly, I'm all for it. Check out well, that's, uh, our first episode with Matthew Rodriguez. Uh, and, and 36? Sure, I'm going to go 36. That's, that's why... The the Ambrosia mm-hmm. deal with Skeletor was the one where I could justify that making sense because it was within the story, right? And it didn't it didn't overshadow things the whole episode at least. Exactly. So, all right. So Manny's second question in the eighties, He Man, which character or characters would you have liked to have seen more than that didn't get the time that didn't get the time you wish we saw. For me, it was Dark Dream and more characters that were from the Eternian past, like the past kings of Eternia, as well as those responsible for Eternia's future, like the Snake Man, the Snake Man, the Ape Man, Time Corridor, and more. He's done this before, hasn't he? I I, I feel think like we've answered had... this question for you, Manny. <laughs> I I'm sure I, I I know what I answered because I'm that guy, but I actually have a different answer this time. All right, what you got? Go ahead. Well, obviously it would be Shakodi because I love Shakodi and See, the I whole feel like, like you said bring that, that in. Like this is all. But no, 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 no. Here's <laughs> okay, a new I'm one. Sorry, Here's a ahead. new one. Go ahead. Garn. Okay. I really wanted him to come back. He was a one and done guy, and and after that whole episode with him, man, I really and we even reviewed that episode. Yes, we did. And it made me go like, oh my god, if he would have come back for maybe like one or two more episodes. That would have been awesome because he was he was a filmation character, and he had no toy. Yeah. But I liked him enough in that one episode that they did to me that he would have been welcome to come back anytime, and I would have been thrilled because the, seeing the two of them team up together and to see how he would have evolved as a character sure. after sure. He Man helping him and all that that would have been a welcome, you know, like come on back anytime you want, Garn. Seriously. Yeah. <laughs> um, real quick, did I say 36 when I said it with Matthew Rodriguez? I think you did. I was absolutely 100% correct, too, somehow. Uh, yeah, <laughs> check out episode 36 for Remaster of Machines and Men. It's a great time. Um, to answer the question, uh, let's, uh, I want to see, uh, I want to see one of the villains. I want to see, like, a Shigora or, uh. Or Damar the Demon. Let's go into the Demon Zone, because I know we talked about that. We had a lot of questions about when he goes back, what happens. Let's yeah. see Let's see what happened. Let's have the Eternians go into the Demon Zone now and see what happened, how this shook out, if he changed for good or whatever. So, uh, yeah, see, having a mass the quote. Having him ask the question again gives and us a new perspective, it, at least this time around. It does, so there you but, go. but Manny, you pull that again. <laughs> you pull that again, and we're not answering it. And time. we will <laughs> answer it again. But yeah, I will say, I will. swear you said this before. Just wait another we, year. Wait we until are 2022. 100% bark and 0% bite, let me tell you what, young man. That's uh, when you got a face like this, the, yeah, yeah, you got it. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. So um, we we actually brought him up earlier on the episode. Skelevator actually did ask Skelevator. any predictions regarding the PowerCon exclusives this year, which we've already answered, uh, and we won't go there. See about uh, 48 minutes into the episode, Skelevator. There you go. Uh, and then we have Jason Torrance. He Ooh, asked... Yeah, yeah. Welcome, um, Jason. Thanks for checking us out. We appreciate it. If you had your choice, who in the DC universe would you like DC Comics to do a crossover with the Motu? Ooh. In the DC Comics universe. Yep. And this one this one was one I was racking my brain about because they've already done a some they stuff have. already uh, both in the 80s and also when they brought the, the comics back so it's like you know who haven't they crossed over with yet or whatever so this one was a little like yeah but scratch the head you know well right off the bat i want i want to get some more one-on-one like we had the uh I mean, Superman, obviously. We had Superman in the 80s. He had a whole thing with him and He-Man. Uh, but beyond that, we had that Justice League crossover, which, um, and Injustice. But I, I feel like those are too broad. Like, I want to see... I want to see something more like Batman Turtles. Like, like a kind of more one-on-one... More focused. More focused. Yeah. Like, I... I and honestly, I probably want whoever it is to come to Eternia. Because it all, I guess Superman did in the 80s. But since then, it seems like, okay, let's get the Eternians and let's go to Earth. No, I want to see, I want to see, and I want to see someone street level, honestly. Like, let's send Oliver Queen to Eternia. Or the question. <laughs> the question in Eternia? Mm-hmm. That could be fun. You know what? Oh, he- <laughs> you know what? Let's do a little throwback to a Justice League Unlimited episode that I love. I want to see Double Date, but I want to see it on Eternia. So send the question, Huntress, uh, Black Canary, and Green Arrow. I want them sent <laughs> to Eternia, and they've got to they've got to figure out a way back. Hmm. And it doesn't even need to be... I don't want anything epic. I don't want anything world-changing. I want those four heroes mistakenly transported to Eternia, and they got to figure out what's up, what's down, what's left, right, and find a way to get back to Earth. And just okay. the antics that would ensue. That's what I want to see. <laughs> and if you guys haven't seen the Double Date episode of Justice League Unlimited, shame on you. Pause the podcast, go watch that, make sure you come back and finish this up, though, so we get our retention rate, you know, the same. Thanks. One one of the best episodes of that entire series. Yes. Definitely. Uh, so this one was hard for me. I, the, the, I, we've already seen Superman. We've already, you know, and all that stuff. But the, for some reason, I, I kept going to, I kind of dug the idea of, of He-Man, not Tila. Mm-hmm. He Man having to team up with Wonder Woman for once. Okay, I thought that could have been kind of interesting. It's like maybe maybe they did something where um, it, like one of the the Greek gods. Oh yeah, and, she... uh, made a deal with Hordak in the past or something, and then there it's like the the payments come due, and, and with Hordak being who he is, and it's like Absolutely. they have to team up together. And granted, I know that borderlines into the Shira territory, but no, I... I don't know. I I I, I kind of dig that aspect and then um no that that would be an easy connection like that would be an easy like okay and mm-hmm. wonder woman's gonna land on Eternia or vice versa and like they're not gonna mm-hmm. be the fish out of water angle that i was going for they're no gonna, it, but they're gonna be the, the okay let's get this done the team up and fight you know this, yeah, the, yeah it's in their wheelhouse i like it i like it so the the other one that I was thinking of because I was like, what character off the wall would be interesting to do this with versus, you know, the the main guys, and and the one that I kept coming back to is Etrigan. Okay, yeah. I kind of because he would fit the style of Masters, but it, you know, once he once he becomes Jason Blood again, he's just a regular Earthling. And I like that idea, and and it could be he's traveling all over trying to get the curse taken from him, 
and the sorceress brings him to Eternia to try to help him at Grayskull. Or so I, I, I don't know how that would even work out. But the idea that somehow mm -hmm. he's he, 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 through Doctor Fate or somebody, they managed to find this connection to Eternia. And I mean, they've already established the you know Masters and DC yeah. in the newer stuff. So it's like it's not it's not going to be a huge jump in logic anymore. So kind of like, you know, somebody like him, and I'm, I'm picturing him being friends with Ram Man for some reason. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's like I could see the two of them having oh, like, a, like a little yeah. little, uh, little adventure while Etrigan's doing his rhyming. And, and, and like Ram Man, nah, you do that pretty good. You know, <laughs> <laughs> whatever. I so, like it. Yeah. I like it. Solid choices. <laughs> Wonderful question, Jason. Thanks for writing in. So uh, and let us know. Let us know what the, down in the comments down below. Let us know what you guys want to see. Who who from DC should team up? Definitely, yeah. Because there's so many characters. Oh, so many. Jeez. Um, Dan Rice. What's up, uh, Dan? <laughs> his big question was, why do oh, I yeah. have so many points? <laughs> I thought you were stripped of all your points. I thought you. I thought I, you tested dirty. Yeah. And the last, uh, the last mandatory uh, drug test. Well, it, here, here's what <laughs> he, here's Dan, what he said. He, he said, "Why do I have so many points, Matthew Dooch? I'll give you a million of them for your birthday today. Aww. Yes, happy birthday, and Thanks, one million Dan. points to you, good sir, because this was published on Facebook on your birthday. So you're the best, Dan. I take back <laughs> all the bad things I said about you." Just kidding. Yeah. Dan, Dan's a great guy. Great. Uh, I've known him on Facebook for years. He's uh, he's always supported the show, and he's just he's just a good guy. Uh, Dan, I'm gonna go ahead and, and award you uh, two two additional points, uh, so you can start <laughs> building your million back up. So, there you go. I appreciate it, buddy. Thank you for the wishes. So uh, here's a name you're familiar with. Okay. Uh, you've actually sat almost shoulder to shoulder with him recently jeremy dewitt oh, i know that guy and he he's here's a another one teddy bear he's got cool tattoos <laughs> but here's another one who is similar to manny because i know we've answered this question from him before oh what we got oh is that about spike organ no okay no, 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 no. good who do you like better from poe to steve or jeremy and why oh i don't think he had the end why before <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna go with uh I'm gonna have to go with Jeremy and I'm I'm probably sure that I did that before too, but he actually answered my uh texts and he said hi to me at the show and did not ghost me that entire day like Steve did. So, you know, Ooh. actions hurt Steve, and they have repercussions. <laughs> Looking at you too, Rodriguez. Don't don't think I forgot about what you did that day either. No, honestly, they're they're both great guys. I did have mm -hmm. the pleasure. Of, I met, uh, I hung out with Jeremy a couple times over that weekend. I took and uh, I I met Steve. Uh, the more that they record, my wife is going to kill me. Both great guys. Funny, hilarious, um, charming, handsome, dreamy eyes. Um, <laughs> just good just good guys. Honestly, I really, I really can't pick between them. They're, they're, they're the yin and the yang of that podcast, and I love them both. Can't wait to see you guys again. Hopefully PowerCon mm -hmm. or uh, just running around the grand state of Michigan. Well, that, that's why I was going to say too fat. I was just going to say. I think I just you did that, but fat. I know you picked both uh, of them before. I, I, I know you it, did. I, I, here's the thing. Uh, when I think about it and I'm trying to really go, okay, which one? Yeah. I, I think Jeremy is a very, um, <laughs> No, he he's like he's like the he's the friend that he would just be on board for anything and he'd just be happy to enjoy the time that you spend with him. Okay. And and then like Steve has that <laughs> like he shuts down. <laughs> and you could on your episode with them on my wife is going to kill me. He sang 
This is the show that never ends. <laughs> and and if you can get guy. the feeling, he had enough, but he God, has to keep going because everybody else is still going. I tell you what, and that it's show like, just... It's past nap time. If it wasn't for Steve, that show would still be going right now. I have no <laughs> doubt about it. Um... Um, Which so, just means he's a great host because that's what you got to keep doing. So. Yes, it's it's true, and 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 I will say uh, on a personal note, like I, I know um, before I started this show with you, and I, I joined the council the first one. Steve reached out to me personally and said he he thought my involvement helped the show, and he was he was really happy to see me going in that direction with my fandom and all that. And I really appreciated that. I know they both appreciated it when I did the artwork for them and everything. But yeah, it's like Jeremy just is the cuddliest panda bunny that that it's like even no matter what, he just becomes but but can you bring Jeremy? You know, like he's (laughs) he's like become part of my wife is gonna kill me. He is two point oh now with with uh, he's one of the two point oh hosts. And I'll and and I'll throw it out there. Uh there should be a podcasters episode this week and if you like Sean's artwork, you might wanna check out their episode this week. So Uh, there. All right, who's next? Uh, last one, last and we one. actually brought his go. name up. God, we know everybody. No, well, here, here's a good, here's a big name for what we, for our little community right now. Mr. Rob McCallum himself oh, responded. Good guy. And he said, when will the faking filmation Kickstarter get uh, his... Hang on. When what? will the faking... Ki- uh, yeah, he, he worded this weird, so hang on. When will the faking filmation Kickstarter get a cease and desist next week or on the last day? Uh, you will not. Mm-hmm. There is no way, and and I'm, and I'm I have no doubt that he was saying that in good humor because I'm sure yeah. that his legal team uh, has vetted this completely and that they would not be at this stage unless they felt they could safely produce it. Yeah, I, I agree, but it was still I, fun that he actually responded. No, I, I so agree, I appreciated but I, that. <laughs> I mean, I, I honestly have no... I mean, I can't say no reservations about that. I mean, they can try anything, but I don't think they will. I don't think mm-hmm. it's worth it for them. I And I, I told them, I said, I, I hope you guys get into all that because, you know, not, not to get too deep into anything because I don't know all the behind-the-scenes facts, but I know, not even James specifically, but I know certain people can do certain things, even outside of He-Man and She-Ra, and get away with it while other people do those things and they get slaps on the wrist or they get their stuff taken down. I've heard about it with T Public, I've heard about it with YouTube, Facebook. Mm-hmm. I mean, and I, I'd love to know more about that and figure out what it is. it just the more popular you are, the more likely you are to get hit with these things. Is it the less popular or the more likely you are to get? Like, I don't get what it is. I don't get how certain people can get away with stuff and other people can't. I mean, Public's a good one. You go on there, there are thousands of copyrighted images on there every yep. day. I mean, they're just, you allow Public, Redbubble, all of them. And some of them stay up forever. And then others are yanked down right away due to copyright infringement. And it's like, where's where's the line? And it's always been a gray area with fan art and all that. But, I mean, it, it's getting to a point in today's culture, you know, like we, we're looping back to the beginning. The internet is such a thing. Online is such a thing. We're kind of getting to a point where we need specific guidelines and they need to stick to them. Not just whatever admin you get that day or whatever bot is is checking up. Like you, There needs to be some actual black and white, you can do this, you can't do that. Because it is a gray area for a lot of people out there. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, and I, from I don't know. From what I understand, they're not intending. I could be wrong, but they're not really intending within the documentary to show the entire thing anyway. It's more of this is the story of James, and that's its own thing. So I no, I, I get it, I get it. <laughs> but I'm I'm saying they're not going to go okay, and now no. and, they, then, and then they shut it down for her 25 minutes. Or they you know, they are making then, a documentary about the so, about the whole thing so i mm-hmm. i think they'll be fine but like i said like i said it, it goes beyond james it goes beyond i mean i don't want to list names here because i haven't cleared it with them but i've talked to a lot of people in the community that are hit with these kind of issues um and i think i think it's a bigger problem than a lot of people want to admit either because they haven't been affected by it or or you know the people that they support haven't been affected by it but it is a big issue there especially you know and that that's another great thing we've reached an age in society where people can make livings off of this they can make livings off of being a youtube personality they can mm-hmm. make livings off doing customs and t-shirts and whatever and I personally think that's great. And as long as someone's putting out their, like, like to me, you putting out your hand-drawn she should not be taken down because you don't own the rights to she Mm-hmm. Because it's your creation. Now, if you were to go, to me, if you were to go out there and grab the image off the she DVD and put out, start selling that, that should be taken down, in my opinion, because you're just ripping off someone else's art. But, you know, maybe I'm off but, base. I don't know. But to, to me, that's where that distinction is. I know it's a big gray area, especially for these companies. And I think that's, I think that, me personally, I think that should be a focal point in this documentary. Mm-hmm. Or, or you could take the stuff that's already out there that looks good and trace it horribly and do the little dots in the smiley face. And, and Mattel says it's amazing. And, we'll and Mattel it. Right. sells it for like buku bucks. Right. And you're like, well, exactly. what the heck is wrong with people? It's like, I want every every gif and every image there is of Skeletor going, yeah, taken off the internet because it's just stupid. <laughs> and then we'll put... And then and well, then I'll give you Mad Saki then. And know? that, I mean, really, you think about it. I mean, I mean, where's it end? Like you said, so that means every meme that you know someone someone puts the 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 meme of Prince Adam laying in his bed and whatever caption they put on it. Okay, that should be taken down because they didn't pay royalty. You know, yeah. they're not doing that. So mm-hmm. I, I don't know. It's it's a mess. And yeah. I I don't know what the answer is. I don't know how they can fix it, but I mean it's it's gonna come to a head eventually. Uh, I mean we've already seen it in in certain areas, like I said, with you know James James and his project, and there have been numerous other people. Uh, you get enough of these flare ups, and something bigger will come of it. Mm. I, hey, I I'm looking forward to it, and oh, absolutely! You know, I I'm very much I I'm positive about everything going on for it. And, yep. No, you know, I I don't want to see anything bad happen to it. I want to see it go forward. I want to see it stretch will. goals get annihilated, just like he man punching it in the face, like at the beginning of the episode. Exactly. So, so I yeah. I don't think you guys got anything to worry about. I think you'll be fine. I just went off on my tangent because. That, that that's a whole nother issue though so. no it, it's it's true like uh, one of the things um when i was doing the hand rendered stuff yeah i always said i i would do that because i'm not making prints and they can't come back at me right. now that i'm starting to get digital again there is that temptation Mm-hmm. Of what if I did like twenty five prints of something and that's it, you know, or whatever. And you then should, there, there you is, should be fine. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I'm not making a huge amount, but here's right. twenty five, and the, the, I can number them or whatever. Like, I mean, Gerard, uh, yeah, I did it again. Ger- Gerald Perel, um, those <laughs> yeah. it, they're cited numbered for a hundred limited edition quantities, right. and that's it. Mm-hmm. 
you know and and so in that way it's like i'm not trying to like find ways around things no. but there is a part of me going if you like my art i want you to be able to find it somehow you know and it's the same as james with his you know if you like he man and you know i like he man i want you to be able to see what i did you right. know and so more yeah. power to him Exactly. No pun intended with that, but yes, more power to him. More so. power to him. You guys have the power. Yes. All right. Well, that was our short episode for the day. Didn't feel like we had much to talk about. Um, well, uh, I don't. I don't know why we even record this. Somewhere. I don't know. <laughs> All right. What we're wrapping you up us up with, Sean? Uh, I felt like there was something I was supposed to say to wrap it up, but I got nothing. Um, uh, just, yeah. Um, oh, 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 I did remember. <laughs> uh, so as of this weekend, as of this recording right now, I don't know how we did it. <laughs> we somehow, amazing. it's like, it's like gremlins. It's yeah. like somehow somebody spilled water on our, on our channel on YouTube and suddenly boom, we yep. we literally a month ago celebrated yep. 200 subscribers by having our giveaway and everything that Matt that Matt rigged up and and all that. Yep. And as of right now, right before we recorded, we are now at 605 subscribers Six. on YouTube, and that is 606. We added one more while we were been recording. <laughs> and we we just both of us would like to just say thank you oh, and welcome because that was completely shocking to me like we kept on like sending messages here and there like every couple of days like hey did you check that out and right. like just the other day we were at 500 and i'm like holy 500 yeah and today we crossed the 600 threshold already mm -hmm. and it's only been like a month give or take since yep. we celebrated so everybody knew thank you for joining us we we appreciate all the views we appreciate all the subscriptions and uh hey comment subscribe yep. like all that stuff because we we appreciate it and uh we're glad to have you along yep absolutely we just want to say thank you everyone old and new and in between everybody who's watching us who hasn't subscribed yet thank you you know, uh, obviously we've had to have been getting some shares out there somewhere. I haven't seen it, so it's obviously a group I don't belong to. But it's, to get that many in one month, it had yeah. – thanks. Thanks to all of you guys. It's humbling. It's awesome. Um, we're doing this for our love of masters, our love of geekness. And uh, it's really great that so many people have decided to sit down and take a ride with us. So – uh, we really appreciate it. Uh, we're cooking up something special coming up here. Uh, there will be more details on that soon. Um, probably around the next time we record, we'll be able to share some more concrete details. I don't want to give away too much now, just in, just in case things get pushed back. But it's going to be some fun stuff, and I think all our viewers will like it. And be a little extra stuff, something that you can skip if, if you're not into it. So, that being said, thanks everybody for joining us today. Uh, check out some of our back episodes if you're just jumping on. I mean, we got 59 more. We got a couple uh, uh, offshoot ones in there, some giveaways, some trivia. All-Star September, those batches of episodes were lots of fun. So, let's do us a favor. Check out our back catalog. Comment on some of the videos. Let us know what you're thinking. Let us know what you like watching. I mean, so if you're commenting on all our Mike Young Productions videos, that tells us we need to do more Mike Young Productions. You know, help, mm -hmm. help us give you what you want to see. Um, we'll still talk about stuff we want to do, but if you guys are telling us you want something, we'll get to that sooner rather than later. Um, and Episodes to remaster. Episodes if you want to, if you want to have us remaster stuff, yeah. make sure you check out our remasterings. We're really proud of those, and it's uh, a lot of fun to do. Uh, so I'll just leave you with the standard checklist. Go down there, like, share, subscribe, uh, hit that heart, that star, whatever simple you got. If you're on the audio podcast, leave us a comment there. Leave us an iTunes review. Sean hasn't gotten to read us an iTunes review in months, and he loves doing it's... that. So. Well, that's how I do it. Yeah. <laughs> no, we, we haven't gotten anything new on there for quite a while. Nope, so, so if you listen to iTunes, feel free. And uh, unfortunately, you know. there are a lot of you on iTunes. That's our number one audio platform, disappointingly <laughs> enough. So, oh, I just, 
And if you don't know what I'm talking about with iTunes, you really need to go back and check out the early episodes. Drive they, Matt nuts. Go to iTunes. Drove me Do it. nuts. So. Do it. No, it, it drove <laughs> me nuts. Because I was like, I want to listen. And then I went, why is this not playing? And yes. it was driving me insane, too. So it's not just you. It was fun. So check out all the links down below. Do all the likes, share, subscribe. And uh, we appreciate you all. Until next time, guys. Until next time. Oh, come on. Oh, oh bear. Oh, bear. Oh!